What are your specials? What are you after? Oh. We got burgers, cheeseburgers, fries, fried onions, pickled onions, pickled eggs, pasties, pies, and odds. Odds? Yeah, we got first to score, half time score, final score, score draw, five to four, and a crack of nap. Everybody dance now! Sorted. Got any tips? Yeah, go easy on the air, Jill. Download the Coral app and check out our in play specials. But please bet responsibly. Well, here we are with the man of the moment. That was one of the great UK Championship finals. Ronnie, all of us in the press room were on the edge of our seats. That just had absolutely everything that match. To get across the line against a guy like Judd in the manner in which you did in that decider must give you massive satisfaction. Yeah, don't, uh, I mean, you know, Judd's played a, you know, to, from 9-4, 9-5 up to 9 all. He's played like perfect snooker, you know, his, his cue ball control for the whole match wasn't that great, but the, for them for four frames, he's, he had the white one under such control, and, and even at 9 all, he was, had a chance with a pink, he's put a pink in the middle, and he's hit it so well, and I just thought, Whoa, you know what I mean, I, I, he, he, you know, he scared me, to, he scared me with the way he plays, you know, because it's very, it's very aggressive, very attacking, it's very in your face, and, um, and he's got so much confidence, and, you know, you just, you can just feel it, you know, and, um, Selby's similar, in, but in a different way. You kind of just think, you know, you're in for for, for hell, really, you know. And uh, for me, it was just a, you know, it was just a battle out there, you know. And to, like you said, you know, I'm feeling pretty pretty tired now. But a three-one, I was feeling it, you know. I felt tired, I felt jaded, but I just had to hang in there, you know. I just thought, you know, it's, you just got to compete, just keep competing, and, and you never know what happened. Well, it's great mental stamina from both of you. I mean, you to keep your composure when he was reeling off the frames and, and him to come back into the match. It must be a strange situation, though, when you're 9-4 up and you're thinking, well, I'm pretty much there. And then you end up sitting in the chair frame after frame. He knocks in a ton 20, a ton 27, and all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's right back in the match. It, you must go through so many different emotions, even with all the experience you've got of, of big occasions like that. I think you kind of have to learn now that five frames isn't a big lead in this kind of stat era of snooker, you know, years ago maybe, but, you know, guys like Selby, Robertson, Ding, Judd, they can make four or five centuries on the trot, no problem, you know, once they get momentum and confidence, you know, they can, uh, you know, they can dominate the table, so the days of thinking you're 9-4, 9-5 up first to 10, 1 to go, it ain't over, you know, and I think people have to start getting ahead around it now, you know, it's, um, you know, um, they play a different game these days, you know, it's so attacking, so aggressive that, you know, they fancy that once they get going and find their rhythm, then, you know, they, they can do that. So, you know, I think you kind of, um, it's just about form. And, and if I wouldn't have found the form in the last frame, I would have lost, you know, I just found something from somewhere and I managed to, to put a 50 or 60 break together, which was, you know, in the circumstances, I, I'm kind of like a bit shocked really, because they didn't feel like I had it in me. Well, you've done five big ones in the UK, the world and the Masters now, but where does this one rank, if it's possible, in the aftermath, you know, you've only just come off, where does this one rank, bearing in mind how hard you've had to work to get over the ankle problem when you might not have even started this tournament? Is this right up there at the top, towards the top? Yeah, it's got, it's got, it's, it's, it's you know, each victory has its own, you know, in different ways, it's you know each win's lovely, and you, you know you're so happy to win. But then each victory in each tournament has its different ways that you've enjoyed it. You know, my world title that I won in 2012 was probably my most beautiful victory because I kind of just played so well and so aggressive and so accurate, and you know every part of my game was just on, and I just felt I just couldn't wait to get out there and play. This, this tournament, you know, I've had to battle and I've had to scrape through a lot of games and, you know, I've kind of been on the back foot a lot and I've just had to find my resolve from somewhere and kind of, for, for that reason, you know, maybe five, six years ago, this victory would, wouldn't have been possible. So, you know, I take a lot out of it because it was kind of one going against the grain in many ways. And so, yeah, you know, this is, this is one that would probably would have got away in the past. So it looked as though there were some nice exchanges between you and Judd at the end of the match. I mean, you've been at the forefront of snooker, you and people like John Higgins and Mark Williams for a long, long time, and you're closer to the end of your career than, than Judd is. But do you feel 
that the future of snooker is quite positive with the way Judd plays the game? And do you, can you see him, from what you've seen over the last couple of seasons and in this match, can you see him going on to dominate the game, do you think, in, for a few years? Yeah, I can see him kind of being the leading player. Dominating, it's, you know, Selby, Robertson, Ding. You know, there's a lot of, they're, they're very, very tough competitors as well. And uh, I don't think any of us, me, John Higgins, Williams, have ever been that much better than everybody else. Like Hendry was, you know, when Hendry dominated and when Davis was dominating, they were so much better than everybody else that that's why they dominated. And I think when me and John come along and Mark Williams, there wasn't a lot between us. We could see you for another few seasons yet, smashing in I these big so. ones. I hope so, you know, I don't want to kind of stop now, you know, I'm enjoying it. And uh, even if I'd have lost that match tonight, you know, I'd have been hugely disappointed because, you know, it was, um, you know, it was, it would have been a hard one to lose. You know, Coventry, yeah, that would have been disappointing to lose, but I felt like I played so well there that I just enjoyed the match. Whereas today, we both kind of wasn't on our best form and we both had to scrap and fight for everything that we got and, and that's what takes a lot out of you. So to lose a match like that where you've had to invest so much in would have really hurt. But um, having come through, yeah, it's great. But, you know, I, I don't want another one like that too soon. You know, I could do a couple of months with a little bit easy ones, you know. Well, you get, you've got some time to chill out now before the Masters and you can really go and enjoy Christmas after two massive tournament victories in successive months. Nice way to round off the year. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously I won the Masters in January, I won the Welsh, I won the Champions Cup and, uh, and now I've won the UK. So it's been a, a fantastic calendar year, if you like, and, uh, and a great start to the new season. But, you know, for me, it's just sort of... Um, you know, I'm just enjoying just competing, playing and, and to play against, you know, all these young, new, new era of players for me to, you know, I had to reinvent my game in many ways. You know, when I started watching Jard and Neil and people like Ding, I thought, you know, this is the, this is the new era of snooker. And I've kind of had to go away and reinvent myself, you know, because I thought I wasn't a powerful enough player. I was a good, I was a good enough player. I wasn't powerful enough and I just kind of had to change my technique a little bit to try and allow me to play certain shots which the modern day player plays, you know. So for me it's been, a, it's, I've learned off of players like Neil, Judd and Ding, you know, because I've watched what they do and how they do it and I thought, you know, I want to, you know, I need to learn from these guys as well. Well, many, many congratulations. Have a great Christmas and uh, we'll see you at Ali Pali for the Masters. Yeah, can't wait. Before Cheers, Ronnie. Me. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. Well, that's almost it from break off from York and the 2014 Coral UK Championship. What a final, what a climax. Ronnie O'Sullivan sealing his fifth UK crown. Right, it almost seems ridiculous to start thinking about the Masters, but it is the next big one and we can exclusively reveal exactly who's playing when in the first round matches. This is what's coming up at Ali Pali at the beginning of January. So the opening afternoon of the Masters sees reigning world champion Mark Selby up against Sean Murphy. What a match. Sunday's rounded off by the reigning Shanghai Masters champion Stuart Bingham up against the two-time ranking event winner Marco Fu. Those matches at 1 and 7 o'clock. Monday afternoon at 1 o'clock, Judd Trump, UK finalist, reigning Australian Open champion up against the five-time ranking event winner Stephen Maguire. And then 7 o'clock on Monday, Neil Robertson, the former Masters champion, former world champion and UK as well, up against Rob Milkins, making his second appearance at the Masters. Tuesday afternoon, 1 o'clock, the reigning UK champion, the five-times Masters champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan, up against Ricky Walden, the reigning international championship winner, and then on Tuesday evening, Barry Hawkins up against Ali Carter. How good it will be to see the captain back in the big time at Ali Pali. And then Wednesday afternoon, one o'clock, Mark Allen against John Higgins, the four-time world champion. What a match that one is. And then Wednesday night, seven o'clock, the 2011 Masters champion, Ding Zhengui, up against the gentleman from Cambridge, Joe Perry. So plenty of great snooker coming up at Ali Pali in January. In the meantime, we started here at the Barbican in York with 128 players 13 days ago. It came down to one and it was the Rocket who once again provided liftoff here with an incredible win in the deciding frame against a very spirited Judd Trump. We hope you've enjoyed this year's Coral UK Championship. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you in 2015 for more brilliant snooker. Merry Christmas.